Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to show a 2000 survival drama film called Castaway. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Chuck Noland is a man of strict schedules and deadlines. With an executive analyst position at FedEx, he travels all over the world tending to problems at FedEx delivery hubs. He's in Russia, optimizing the hub's productivity, and gives his long-term girlfriend Kelly a call, telling her he'll be home in around 18 hours. He arrives back in the US and meets up with Kelly and the two head for the Nolan family Christmas dinner where Chuck's brother brings up marriage for Kelly and Chuck. The two laugh it off but Chuck's tooth starts hurting and considers heading to the dentist. An emergency comes up and Chuck needs to leave for Malaysia. The pair consult their schedule books and it's clear that Chuck is a man who places his work above anything else, considering that it's the holidays and he still intends to leave. Kelly accepts this and tries to compromise, asking Chuck to be home before New Year's Eve to which Chuck says yes. At the airport, Kelly gives Chuck an old watch, a family heirloom, as a Christmas present. Chuck is touched by Kelly's gift and gives her a gift in return. He hands her a small box which she believes to be an engagement ring. Chuck then tells her they'll open it on New Year's Eve when he returns. Chuck then takes off along with four flight crew members and the flight appears to be normal. A few hours into the flight and they run into a storm. Chuck hears the pilots talking about how they've deviated off course to avoid the storm but are now out of radio coverage. The storm gets worse and something in the plane explodes. Chuck and the flight crew are thrown around but Chuck manages to hold on to an emergency life raft. Chuck sees the ocean getting closer and before he knows it, an impact rocks the aircraft, and water floods the plane. A few hours later, he wakes up on the beach of an uncharted island in his life raft along with debris from the plane including several FedEx packages. Chuck surveys the island finding a cave and climbs to the island's highest peak. He sees the body of a crewman floating close by and runs to it. He finds it's one of the crew members and discovers he's been saying the man's name wrong all this time. He buries the man and says a short prayer. In the early morning, Chuck sees a ship and tries his best to signal it but the ship is too far. He gets on his raft and foolishly tries to make a break for the ship but ends up getting smashed by the waves, injuring his leg in the reef. He crawls back to the beach and retreats into the cave, prepared to die. He sees Kelly's watch and regains his will to survive. The next day, Chuck opens up the packages he found on the beach except for one that has a pair of wings on it. In the boxes, he finds VHS tapes, a pair of ice skates, and a volleyball which he names Wilson. With the equipment he scavenged, Chuck gathers food, water, and is even able to make a shelter. After many failed attempts, Chuck makes fire, and his spirits are lifted, now having access to warmth, light, a way to cook food, and a companion in the form of Wilson the volleyball. While hunting, Chuck's tooth starts hurting again and he's forced to perform a tooth extraction on himself. He jams one of the ice skates in his mouth and smashes it with a rock, breaking the tooth out and passing out. Years pass and Chuck is now more used to life on the island. His hair has grown out, he hunts efficiently, and is even able to figure out dates, making his own solar calendar. His cave has also been improved, now decorated with painted faces. Chuck and Wilson's solitary life changes when a large piece of plastic floats into shore and Chuck gets the idea of turning it into a sail. Chuck starts chopping down coconut trees and gathering wood to create a raft. He then has to make a lot of rope and calculates that he'll have to finish his raft, stock it, and prepare to leave in as little as a few months so he can use the wind and tides to his advantage. Chuck is halfway finished with his raft when he realizes he needs more rope. He chats with Wilson, telling him that there's a way to get 30 more feet of rope but he doesn't want to do it. He argues with Wilson and eventually agrees to get the rope. He climbs to a high point and starts pulling up a rope tied to a broken tree overlooking a cliff. He pulls up something heavy, looking like a person-shaped tree with a noose around its neck. Back at the cave, he talks to Wilson, revealing that the reason for the tree dummy was because he was testing out suicide. He wanted to see what would happen if he had hung himself from that height and saw that he'd end up breaking his bones and would have died slowly. He explains to Wilson that he didn't want to spend the rest of his life on a godforsaken island talking to a volleyball. He gets angry and throws Wilson out of the cave and into the surf. He immediately regrets his decision and spends some time finding Wilson, apologizing to the volleyball. Some time passes and Chuck prepares to depart on his raft. He etches a message on a boulder, stating his name and that he'll escape into the sea, including an affectionate message for Kelly. After that, Chuck launches his raft and it is afloat. He starts paddling through the reef and gets slammed by waves over and over. He spots a huge wave and he and Wilson brace themselves. 
He unleashes the large plastic sail and the wind pushes them over the wave. Chuck looks back at the island he called home for years and journeys into the void of the open ocean. Chuck and Wilson journey for several nights and get hammered by storms. Passed out with no food or water, a dizzy Chuck wakes up and notices that Wilson has drifted away. He swims after Wilson but Wilson has drifted too far. He now has to make the difficult choice of getting Wilson back or keeping his grip on the raft. Chuck chooses to remain with the raft and apologizes to Wilson for letting him go, crying and shouting. Passed out once again on the raft, Chuck is awakened by a passing ship and is rescued. Back in the US Kelly receives a phone call and faints from the news. Four weeks later and Chuck is on a flight back to the US chartered by FedEx. He's greeted by simple amenities that had been absent to him on the island like soda, ice, and even just comfortable clothes. He expects Kelly to meet him at the terminal but finds out that a funeral had been held for him and that Kelly had to move on. Kelly has also gotten married and is now a mother. Chuck arrives at the airport greeted by a crowd of FedEx employees and the media. After the ceremony, he enters the terminal and is greeted by Jerry, Kelly's husband. He tells Chuck that Kelly is too overwhelmed and simply couldn't face him at the moment. Jerry leaves and through a window Chuck sees Jerry leading a weeping Kelly to their car. After the FedEx employee celebration of Chuck's return, Chuck is left alone in his hotel room, seeing a mountain of food left behind by everyone. He also spots a small lighter on the table, recognizing how such a small and simple object can be the key to life or death on the island, and here it is, just left out on the table. That night, Chuck heads to Kelly's house, and the two reunite. They catch up with one another and Chuck finds out that Kelly never stopped looking for him until the day he was found. Chuck returns the watch reasoning out that it's a family heirloom and should stay within the family. Chuck returns the watch with a heavy heart as it was one of his motivations to survive and get himself back to civilization. Chuck expresses his regret of leaving that night. Kelly reminds Chuck of his promise to return and cries. Kelly brings Chuck to the garage and Chuck is surprised that Kelly has kept the car they shared as a couple. The two hug affectionately and Chuck prepares to drive off. Before he could leave the driveway, Kelly runs out and they share a kiss and tell each other they still love one another. They hold each other affectionately but come to an understanding that too much had changed. Kelly now has a family and no matter how much she loves Chuck, she can't abandon them. The two sadly depart. Chuck expresses to a friend the bittersweet experience of losing Kelly when he crashed, surviving on the island, making it back to society only to find out that he had been considered dead and that he's gained his life and Kelly back, only to lose her a second time. Chuck drives to Texas to return the unopened package with a pair of wings. He arrives at a farmhouse but nobody is home. He leaves the package and a note saying the package saved his life and thanking the person who sent it. On his drive out, he stops by an intersection and reads a map. A woman in a farm truck drives up to Chuck and happily gives him directions. She then drives off and Chuck sees a pair of wings painted on the woman's truck. Chuck steps onto the intersection, looking at all four directions, then looks at the direction where the woman drove off to and smiles. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.